Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day and welcome to the channel. So a couple weeks ago, I was doing a lot of research because I was getting ready to build uh, another golf cart. And I wanna do a few things differently in this new golf cart versus the one that I built last year. And one thing was I wanted to put a different separate 12 volt battery in it for all the 12 volt accessories on these. So I wouldn't need to run things like converters and so that I wouldn't uh, draw from my, my main battery pack that powers the cart itself. And while I was doing that, I came across a brand called Lightime and I found their 12 volt mini battery, which really intrigued me because it's really small and I'm dealing with a pretty small battery compartment in here. And so it allowed me to put something like this inside to power everything and it's 100 amp hour. Well, after finding this battery, they reached out to me and asked if I would like to test out their 48 volt 60 amp hour pack in the cart, to which I said, yeah, absolutely. So I just wanna be clear, I did buy this battery before they reached out to me on this one. So I'll go through the size and specs of this battery and then I'll get it thrown in the cart mounted and we'll do a range test and also a performance test on it. It says it's rated for a maximum of around 20 miles an hour. This car will do about 35. And so we'll see kind of, you know, how far we can push it if the battery starts to heat up and things like that. So the battery does come really nicely packaged. You've got your post bolts, uh, some instructions and service card. And there's the battery itself. Uh, it does have handles on each side. So I'll get it pulled out of here. So this battery is a lithium ion phosphate battery and specifically made for golf carts. It's 51.2 volts rated at 60 amp hours. It also has a max continuous discharge rate of 120 amps and charge rate of 120 amps along with a max discharge current of 350 amps for one second. So we'll definitely be able to test out that to see if it does if we do trip the BMS, uh, since our controller can go up to 600 amps. As far as size goes, at the base, we are right at 19 inches. Uh, where the handles are, it's a little bit wider. It's right at uh, 20 and a half inches. But really the base is the main thing because that's where your mounting is gonna be. So right at 19 inches on the base in width. And then in depth, we're right at nine inches height. It's going to be right at eight and a half inches. So as far as installing it in the cart, I do have a couple of options. I can either put it back here uh, in the back of the cart and leave this whole space in the front free, or I can put it up here in the front, leaving the back space free. Uh, I think just for simplicity, I'm going to put it up here in the front. I'm going to strap it all down and then I'll attach all these wires to it along with the controller and it should be pretty secure. So I ended up uh, changing my plan a little bit here. I ended up moving the battery to the front of the battery tray instead of the back because some of my wires weren't quite long enough to reach to the back. I will end up lengthening those wires when I, when I put this in, in a more permanent solution. Uh, it's still very snug. It's not gonna go anywhere, um, but let's see if, uh, if this thing will turn on now that I got everything wired in. Oh. Got to turn, turn it back to run. So looking like 52.4 volts. Uh, looks like everything is turning on. Let's see if we've got, yep, lights are all working. All right, so we're going now. One thing I did do is I set the max discharge to 120 amps, which is what the battery has a max continuous discharge rate of. I also set the max speed to 25 miles an hour. So we'll see you know, what kind of speed, if we can hit that 25 or not. All right, so I just got back from doing a quick little test just to make sure everything was functioning properly. And it seems to accelerate almost as fast as I had before, set at a higher uh, discharge rate. Uh, I had nothing cutting out. It easily got to the max 25 miles an hour that I had set for it, which makes me think it can still go quite a bit faster, uh, but that might start to heat up the battery a bit. So what I'm gonna do is make sure the battery's fully charged and then I'll do a full range test with this. I'm assuming I should be 
maybe around 18 to 20 miles uh, with this battery. And then after we see, you know, just the, the range we can get out of it, I want to do a couple of performance tests just to see the, the top speed and, uh, and how fast we can get it to accelerate. All right, so I got the card all charged up and uh, ready for the test. So I'll kind of show you what we're sitting at right now and then some of the settings that I have uh, on the Navita system set up. All right, so we're sitting at a resting voltage of 53.5 volts. Uh, I'll reset the, uh, the trip. I'll also reset the max and average speeds and timer. Uh, for the speed, I'm going to have it set at max, which is what I always do on these, uh, these speed tests or range tests. Regen, I'm going to set it recommended, and then acceleration, I'm also going to set that at recommended. I will be running uh, lights and sound the entire time because I am doing this test at night like I usually do just because I get a more consistent result. One last thing I want to note is on the specs for this uh, lifetime 48 volt 60 amp hour battery, it says it's for carts that are running at 21 miles an hour or slower. Uh, I don't really know why the battery, why the speed would matter. Uh, to me, it has more of a discharge rate that matters than just the speed itself. So I am going to be having this set at pretty much the max speed that my car will go, which is around 35, 36 miles an hour. But I did set the battery discharge limit to 120 amps because it says that that's the, the max continuous that the battery will allow. I'll be checking the heat of the battery kind of periodically just to make sure we're doing okay. But I really shouldn't have any issues uh, going faster than what they say, as long as I'm not discharging at a higher rate. So we're going for uh, right at seven miles, just a hair over, running for 15 minutes, 52 seconds, so almost uh, almost 16 minutes, resting at 52.2 volts. Uh, running pretty strong. It's running, uh, let's see what the, so we're averaging 26.7 miles an hour, max of 35.2, 15 miles 15.28 miles got a max speed still of 35.2 average of third of 27 uh resting voltage of 49.8 49.9 i can definitely tell that we are getting real close on the battery um because it's starting to slow down on just acceleration mainly but we're right at almost half of what my 120 amp hour pack has gotten me on the range test so this is kind of about where i would have expected 60 amp hours uh test has been going well i'm gonna probably uh take it back home and hopefully i make it back all right so we made it back to the house no pushing this time 
Uh, we're sitting at a resting of 47 volts, but the second I hit the gas, it's dropping down into the 44 volt range, which is getting pretty close to the uh, the factory cutoff. Uh, so I know I'm I'm gonna run out in the next, you know, probably quarter mile or so. We're sitting at a range of 16.23 miles, uh, which is actually a hair over half of what I got on a 120 amp hour pack. Um, average of I think 26.4, which dropped quite a bit in the last uh, mile or so and then a max of 35.2. Uh, so I ran real close to what I normally run. All right, so now I'm gonna get this charged up and then tomorrow I'm gonna be doing a performance test on it just to see you know, what we can throw at this battery and, uh, and what it'll take. All right, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of a performance test. Got the card all charged back up again. Uh, I'll go through some of the settings that have changed on the, the controller and then we'll, uh, we'll see what the battery will take. So here I'm going on to the Navitas app and I'm gonna be changing the battery discharge limit from the 120 we set at for the range test up to 200. Everything else will be the same. <laughs> All right, I gotta be completely honest. I was uh, not expecting a wheelie at 200 amps. Um, I, I was expecting it to accelerate, but I figured yeah, I might have a little bit of shuddering and stuff because it was a little bit higher than the BMS was rated at, but it pulled a pretty good wheelie, and uh, and so we'll kick it up to 250 and see what happens. So now I'm going to go on the Nuvitas app again. I'm going to change the battery discharge limit from 200 amps to 250, and we'll see how it handles it. Uh, wow. Um, so 250 amps, I, uh, you probably couldn't notice from the video, but I had to get out of it because I could feel it hitting the tipping point where it was starting to lean back. It was definitely going to drag the back on the ground and I would rather not do that if I can avoid it, but holy cow, 250 amps, it'll stand the card up on the back. Um, very impressed. Uh, pretty, pretty shocked by that actually. Um, I don't really see the reason to go any higher than that because it's just going to it's just going to knock it back faster. I might hit the cutoff at some point, um, but definitely impressed that at 250 amps, it'll stand up the cart without any hesitation whatsoever. We'll have to run in this lifetime battery through a few different tests. I got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the overall results that we got from it. Uh, as far as the range goes, it, it went exactly uh, what I would have expected from it. It's, it's almost, it's at actually just a hair over half of what my normal 120 amp hour uh, pack has gotten me, so 60 amp hours being half, uh, pretty much what I would have expected. And that was running it flat out. I think we averaged just under 28 miles an hour, uh, which is faster than than what the battery's even recommended to go, and upwards of 35 on the, on the max speed. So really impressed with the results and the range on that. And then when we started pushing the amps up, it really never skipped a beat. It just kept, uh, kept putting out more power, more power to the ground, never hesitated. I never felt any type of battery cut off or anything like that. Uh, didn't get any excess heat from the battery. I think the highest rating I got was 95 degrees and it was I think 90 degrees outside when I was running it. So the battery performed really well. That being said, I would not recommend running it higher than the 120 amp discharge rating that it says, because if you do push it higher than that and you're in terrain where you're going up and down hills or you have a higher load on it, you definitely can start to heat up the battery. I think for the occasional, you know, having fun and you know pulling a wheelie to show it off, uh, I think you have no issues with that. One other thing to note is this: this car is not stock. It is running a higher output motor and controller, so I wouldn't expect to be pulling wheelies on this setup with just throwing the battery in it without upgrading the motor controller. So hopefully, if you're looking to get uh, kind of an entry level into the lithium market in a golf cart, this really bang for the buck is pretty awesome i think the price as the, at the time of this video is right at a thousand dollars or just a hair under which is pretty awesome to be able to get a 60 amp hour uh lithium setup for your cart i do also have a discount code that will hopefully help out a little bit with the cost and then i will be doing another video on this 12 volt 100 amp hour battery that's going in my other cart that i'm currently building just to run all the accessories off that and, and speaking of the 12 volt accessories, if you are going to switch your lead acid pack over to this 48 volt 
uh, setup or something similar, you will need to run some sort of a converter to run all the 12 volt accessories if you have lights or things like that um, because they will not run on the 48 volt system. But hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next one.